Now you know what's wrong with tracking in Alberta? That's what's wrong. <laughs> Things are falling off. And I just heard a, as I'm leaving, I'm leaving the McDonald's. I did my morning shift, five hours. My hotel is over there, 500 meters away. So I walked 500 meters at six o'clock in the morning. And finally, I made myself do some some uh, exercises so I did some push-ups I did three exercises push-ups then I did I use my 80 80 pound kettlebell did some uh, bent row and then I did squats that's it because I, I haven't touched it for a month I, I figured you know just to get started again but yeah it feels again heavy like I used to do almost like 20 25 push-ups now i did 10 and that's it but anyway it's not the it's not the number of uh, repetitions you can do it's the process right so it's important to stay in shape but anyway, mcdonald's i go inside they, they nowadays in alberta by the way i think they actually i like this i think they should do it everywhere i know many guys in the states don't agree with this but I believe in these vaccines, you know, I don't know what the problem is. When I was a kid, we always get got vaccines from, um, I'm not sure about these names, but I know in Russia it was uh, OSPA, OSPA, right? It was very dangerous uh, disease, which was len uh, later eradicated. So we had vaccines, Privivki, right? From many of these diseases and nobody was complaining. I don't know what the story is here. Some people just don't believe in vaccines anymore. Uh, but anyway, in Alberta, you go into any restaurant and there's a sign that says, uh, we'll be happy to, you know, I'll let you stay and dine in if you could show us proof of uh, either recent uh, negative uh, test for COVID or proof that you were vaccinated. And first time they asked me that, I got like, wait a second, I know I have it somewhere, right? I did, I took two vaccines and I, I know they sent me an email, but I didn't save it somewhere on the computer. Like usually I put, uh, you know, so that I can find it quickly. I put it on the desktop somewhere of my laptop, but I started searching a receipt, nothing, uh, vaccine, nothing, COVID, nothing. And then finally I found something on the dose so it turns out the email from uh, Ministry of Health of Ontario was called dose administration receipt and it has a nice PDF attached to it and it has my name and it you know like official Ministry of Health form and it says the date and then in black and white it says you have received two two doses of you know this vaccine and so i showed it to the gather and they said okay and then 10 minutes later the manager comes out because i'm like the only guy sitting there everybody comes in you know fully masked they grab the food and they look at me funny and they leave and i'm sitting there like at, i'm you know it's my home office i have my computer my overpriced mac you know i have my phone charges you know earphones my bag and people are like, who the heck is this guy, you know? Who does he think he is, you know? <laughs> and then, because you need to show proof of vaccination. And I, I guess a lot of these people, they don't have it. And the manager comes out. Oh, can I please see uh, something that, you know, um, make sure that you're not sick or something. I said, I, I showed it to the clerk at the counter. I sure had the email. Oh, um, no, she didn't see anything. I'm like, what? Oh, check this out. The guy is moving a small drill rig in the distance there, far, far away. Um, anyway, I show it to her on the computer. So now I already saved that file as PDF on, on my screen of the computer so I can, I know where it is. I can just click it, show her, turn, turn the computer to her. And, uh, you know, you might be wondering why I'm sitting so low. It's because 
I, I usually overnight I lose all air. I know it's the trailer somewhere. The trailer is not the not the truck. Because the truck by itself, you come back, everything is good. But as soon as I'm hooked up to the trailer and I'm tired of all these tiny baby leaks, but you know it's not audible leak, it's somewhere leaking like very slow. So overnight it loses air and then of course my seat goes down my cap starts tilting back because it has air two airbags under the cab and I booked my hotel till tomorrow and today's already Wednesday right so I spent five hours waiting looking for a load everything is either cheap basically there's like two loads I emailed the Landstar broker I know I, I said you guys have IGN loads anywhere I didn't even tell them that I'm in Alberta. They said, no, sorry. So these guys have no loads for an IGN anywhere in the US and Canada. It's kind of strange. But I, I see some loads out of Texas. I see something out of South Carolina. Yeah, a guy called me. Oh, you looked at my load. I hate when they do that, you know, like you look at your, I look, I clicked on, on details for his load on the load board and I saw it was too far away and I close it and then of course my phone rings well did I call you like why are you calling me like it's so annoying you know it, it's as if it's uh, you're not supposed to look at the load oh somebody over there looked at my load can I help you with anything so well did I call you what the heck why are you bothering me you know but they all track, they all track your calls, right? So as soon as you, I mean, they all track your, uh, they, 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 they track activity on their listings, right? Actually, right, so this guy was okay. Um, looked like he was eager to book something, you know? So we started chatting and, uh, but it's, it's 2,500 miles. And I said, okay, I'm okay 2,500 miles. But I said, I have a Jeep and Stinger. So I'll be 107 feet long. I said, if I take your load, it'll cost me 7,000 US in permits and escorts from South Carolina to Canada where he was going. So I can stop by in my yard, which is 2,000 miles away, by the way. So my yard is 2,000 miles away. So I can stop in my yard in Cambridge, drop the Jeep and Stinger, reshape everything, reshuffle, you know um, play these Lego games with the trailer which would cost me probably 300 bucks Canadian but that's fine and then I can dead head to South Carolina so now the miles become because I I looked at it the miles become 3,000 no wait it's more South Carolina is like 800 miles from me so yeah the miles become so 2,000 plus no, no, it's okay. Yeah, so it becomes 3,000. So two miles to my yard and then 850 or something to <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> and then it goes into Eastern Canada in the middle of nowhere where there's no loads. And the guy says, as, as usual, you know, brokers like to use the word only. And he says, well, it's only 1,300 miles. So it pays pretty good said yeah only for you it's only but for me 2,000 miles uh, 2,500 miles if I do it like this and then I said I cannot do it for that price yeah I know that's a good price but I gotta lose the Jeep and Stinger otherwise it's too much I said or actually from 7,000 I managed to drop the cost of permits to 2,000 bucks even less than 2,000 because I dragged that line you know I used that permit uh, estimate uh, website i dragged the line of the route instead of going across us i dragged it towards port huron michigan and then toronto and so the the majority of the trip is through canada and of course the miles increased but right away it became less than two thousand bucks i think it was like fourteen fifteen hundred dollars and then of course i can stop there i can drop the jeep and stinger um, but I don't know, it's just, it's not realistic. And then this same guy calls me, he says, oh, I sent you a message there. 
and I, I was busy doing something so I didn't notice that I had an email from this guy and I check here some kind of a mid-size basically baby wheel loader and it's 30,000 pounds you know it's and I said hey I told you I have a Jeep on the deck right so if I don't take it off there's no room on the deck to load anything so I have to take it down I take it down I'm 107 feet long so I will need permits in uh, and this was going to inside Canada so I said I would need permits for these provinces that I'm traveling through so it was like 850 miles actually but it was good because it was going in the direction of Ontario you know so I give him a price he's okay I'm gonna send it over to the broker um, see what they say of course they he didn't get back to me because they probably decided it was too expensive for them but again you see that's what happens sometimes you know when you come out somewhere with all your big guns so to speak uh, you know like nine axles I cannot do cheap stuff oh one one lady had a load from Arizona 2200 miles I said do you have a budget and she wants an RGN or a low pro step deck but it's some crazy 25,000 pounds you know like that never works to go uh, actually Arizona is not that far it's like 1300 miles uh, but to load such a light load just to give you an idea of the rates right so she says I, I said do you have a budget and she says, I'll try to be around uh, 4,500 bucks US. And it's like 22 or 2300 miles to Canada. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh, how much do you need? How much do you need? I said, well, fuck, I need at least 10,000 bucks because I'm 16, uh, yeah, I think it was 1600 miles. I'm 1600 miles away. And then it's 2200 miles and I said I checked uh, uh, I think it was New Mexico and Oklahoma for sure I would need an uh, I would need a escort because uh, over there I think it's like 90 feet long over 90 feet long you need one pilot somewhere there you know so it's expensive right so and of course I said yeah it's not gonna work it's too far so it's just cheaper for me just to go empty you know just to go empty uh reset you know you know that movie edge of tomorrow i often remember that movie i i loved it i watched it probably three times where you know that she takes a gun out and she says and she looks tired and she says to tom cruise let's just reset <laughs> and he wait wait <laughs> i'm okay you know so she was resetting the day each time by killing him, right? Because then he would come back and the time would reset. So she, let's just reset. <laughs> that's how I'm feeling. Let's just reset. You know, basically regroup, go the heck back home. I never get loads out of here. It's always one way. Uh, oh, and of course, I also searched BC. I hate that province. It's overpriced. I hate those mountains. But there was a load out of BC, the guy paying a step deck rate to move a 75,000 pound excavator. So I said, how about, you know, real rate? Um, and he writes back, yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Man, so basically, yeah, if you make good money coming here, you you deadhead empty that's why this stuff has to pay a lot of money to come out here i'm i'm telling you at least for me i cannot do it for cheap but actually i got great pay coming this way i got paid on the same day right everything is cool so now it's just time to cut my losses regroup like i said i'll just wait today and maybe a couple of hours tomorrow and then i'll start trucking back home and that brings me to the topic of this blockbuster uh we're gonna see some stunt driving in downtown Red Deer, bobtail style. So I'm gonna drop the trailer because over here this UFA, uh, it's all cardlock. 
Actually, they have a C store in there, but I have no idea what that is. And I don't know the pricing, but I searched on uh, Guess Buddy. I searched on guessbuddy.com and I found that actually downtown, that's what I call it. I call it downtown where I was at Starbucks over there. Starbucks and Chapters, uh, you can actually get diesel for dollar twenty-one point nine, so basically dollar twenty-two a liter. Whereas here it's dollar thirty, and I'm pretty low. I'm like less than quarter of a tank, so I definitely need uh, diesel. But I need over there it's at some big station like Flying J somewhere there. I know it'll be okay, so I'll just probably take like wow one side. I'll fill up one side, but I cannot go there with the trailer. I'll just fill up uh, one side because they have these tiny baby hoses you know it takes forever to fill up and when I came back I had this note from Charles Sergey I watch all your videos cool show and interesting have a good trip back to Toronto <laughs> So this guy, I think he knows that I'll have to get get out of here empty. Uh, anyway, let me just uh, bring my um, e-log up to date. And this this was just a sign that I finally have to hook my new one. I still have in the box that I bought I bought like two months ago. I still haven't hooked it up. You know the frame, the new frame for the for the Samsung uh, tablet and then I'm gonna program this I think I'm going to Husky Husky gas station downtown that's where diesel was dollar uh, 22 per liter Canadian so it's like a dollar US per liter so 378 a gallon US I think right so it's a dollar US per liter and there's 3.78 liters in a gallon 378 yeah so it's it's still expensive you know but at least it's cheaper than here around here yeah you see that my uh, def gauge i just added def because when i was at the kenworth doing that overpriced oil change and uh, annual inspection uh, i saw that they had a super great pricing on on these uh, def you know containers it was only less than 10 bucks canadian which is pretty much like the same price as you can get at the pump but of course it's much more work you have to you know manually hold it raise it you know oh check this out what is that cable over with some kind of a NATO style but body Versa line services <laughs> interesting all the same color so we're gonna have a big antenna on the roof whole bunch of lights in the back he probably does some kind of technical service but that's a super interesting body. He has a door in on the side, he has a door in the back, like some kind of a rolling doors. And he says, no, forget it. I'm not fueling up here. So anyway, I disconnected, I filled up my my um let's see where we are. Alright, so we're here. I filled up my dev tank. No, not sure what this guy is doing. Probably wants to back somewhere. Oh yeah, that guy forgot what size his tank was on. All right, let's see how they back. So this is a day cap, so super short truck. 
and I assume it's a professional driver because it's a rolling door in the back so these guys do a lot of deliveries so they always back into docks you know so usually these guys are pretty good at backing and I see there's no hesitation he created a large angle in the at first and then it's pretty much straight back see a new driver would be creating angles like that all the time you know and his truck will be going left right left right oversteer one way try to uh, correct oversteer the other way <laughs> no we're not going that way too much too much wildlife over there at this time of day I'm gonna go here not think that this distance is 500 meters you know yeah that's my hotel all right where are we going am I going downtown or oh yeah that was the guy remember I said I heard the explosion there was a wide explo uh, there was a super loud explosion and I'm guessing he lost the tire, but I didn't see anything. Okay, I think we're going this way. All right, yeah, we're going this way. Because the place where I'm going, I call it downtown. Yeah, even though I think the, the downtown actually is where I was doing that walking tour. But this is probably more like a modern downtown where all the stores are. And there's a sign that says uh, Red Deer, city limit. Highway 2 goes this way, 595 goes this way, we're going straight. Oh yeah, it's uh, my gas station is like one kilometer away on the right, on this side. But that's why they have, you see, like they have a, my, the Best Buy, they have a bunch of banks in here. And they sell drugs openly here. And they're not even hiding London drugs. So anybody wants drugs, you know to find them, you know. Yeah, in Alberta, you don't have to be coy about it. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. That's just the pharmacy. Come on guys, where's your sense of humor? And I already know that this street, that's where I take, I took back, I came out of here, I think. I took that street, that's what takes me back to that uh, gasoline alley, east. And there's so many cool trucks in here. Well, not this one, this is just a generic T800, but Wow, look at this guy. <laughs> Where did he find all that mud? Man, and his, uh, his right fender is all ripped off. That guy was doing some serious off-roading. Alright, where's uh, my uh, husky? Mm, 700 meters oh I think I have to go on the I have to go on the service road uh, yeah you see like that's what I meant they have the main road two lane they have the service road here they have the service road over there uh, okay I think it's the next one I have to I have to switch to that one oh yeah and there's no you see this thing only goes this way and that's a two lane as well but 
yeah okay here's the indigo chapters this is where i spent a couple of days at that starbucks we have a nice nice cozy starbucks inside so i know this area because there was a that's where i, I spent what four days and call it yeah holiday inn it's somewhere here oh yeah i see diesel oh perfect it's right here all right so where's diesel 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 3.35 meters i think i should be able to fit in there what do you guys think but no i think it's too long <laughs> i don't like it we'll just go on this side careful because I see a lot of I get nervous where I see so many cars around oh, wow I better check that canopy over there all right I did some quick shopping and these guys I'm not sure how they make money. See in the front there's it says windshield repair. They always buy into this franchise deal, right? So they give them these uh like a little tent with all the tools. And these guys are always they always no customers, you know? Like whenever I see them, I see like this guy, he's He's talking on the phone, he's just chatting, smiling, but he's not making any money. And then he's gonna spend the whole day here. And then just at six o'clock or whatever, he'll pack his stuff and go home. And it's always young guys. So it's... So it's some kind of a scam, you know? Like first off, to, to, to fix windshields, you don't need to be a part of a franchise, right? Like, you can, you can take a course, you can take a course and, or just watch some videos on, on YouTube or something, you know? But I always see they have some kind of a name. They have some kind of a name, like a franchise name on top of the tent. And so, of course, that company probably makes money on uh, training. They make money on selling them supplies. They probably charge them like... They charge them like probably 50 bucks for a pack of that glue or something, you know? Everything is overpriced. Where are we going? left okay you have to be the you have to be a bit aggressive over here or otherwise nobody will let you in oh yeah see that's that street I was talking about uh, it's actually so much better to turn from here from this end and you see they have here A and W and that's what I've been eating lately. I've been strictly on A and W diet. And I'm telling you, this is so much tasty, uh, much tastier than what you can get in the States. Uh, and they have a deal so uh, a mama burger which is a single single patty uh, burger is uh, 250 
Look at it. But just the burger with nothing, you know, no fries, nothing. Just just a sandwich, right? But still, 250 Canadian. And so I go in, I usually tell them, hey, give me one papa burger and one mama burger. Speed photo enforced. Oh yeah? Come and get me. We're doing 50.005 kilometers an hour. No, right now my needle is straight on some guys sitting sitting in pickup trucks I'm always suspicious of guys sitting inside pickup trucks at a truck stop <laughs> 